There's a ministry today that is going on around us, but that is not the kind of ministry that the Lord has come to perform upon this earth. We read in Isaiah chapter 42 very clearly, as a ministry without prejudice, a ministry where human ways and plans got nothing to do, it's something that is purely born out of the Father's will. Hallelujah. A ministry of judgment. He will not turn a burning flag away. He will not reject it. Neither will he leave a broken reed like that. That is the kind of ministry the Lord is going to do in these days. And there are many who are sitting in prison houses. There are many who are bound and they are blind today. But praise God, God is going to send for the ministry in these days. A ministry which is born out of this third realm. A ministry which is coming out of the living room and the loving room of a room of relationship and intimacy with the Lord. Hallelujah. It's not going to come out of any seminary. It's not going to come out of a great man of God in this hour. But I believe with all my heart, it's going to come out of a people who have been cleaving with Him and have been hearing Him and have desired to walk with Him day by day in their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is one thing the Lord wants to remind to us. Therefore, brethren, know your calling. That's where the Lord wants us to be reminded. Let us be reminded that God wants us to know and remind us about our calling. It is to this ministry God has called us. To this excellent ministry. It is not to some kind of ministry which men are always prone to take up. Men are always wanting to do something for God. But a ministry which is born out of his own bosom. Praise God. God wants to perform this in our lives in these days. And I believe that the Lord wants us to be open. Now turn again with me to some more scriptures. Psalm 102. We are just gleaning here and there. Psalm 102. We will glean in God's word and pick up some handfuls for these days. Psalm 102. Thank you, Lord. Verse 13. Yeah. For the time to kill with her, he is set by his Yes. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the, time, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the death thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord. And all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall here appear in his glory. He, he will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven the Lord behold the earth. To hear the groaning of the prisoner. To lose those that are appointed to death. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion. And his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together in the kingdom. To serve the Lord. He wakeneth my, str he wakeneth my strength in the way. He shorteneth my days. I said, O oh my God. Take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them that, that shall wax old like a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. The children of thy servants shall continue. And their seed shall be established before thee. Praise God. 
You know, here again we see very clearly the Lord's desire. And he says here in verse 13, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and the favor and favor the dust thereof. Now it says here in verse 14, Thy servants take pleasure in her stones. It talks about a ministry. It talks about a ministry. A ministry that shall be concerned with the stones. And you know what stones they are? As we read 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 4, and he has also lively stones be built up into a spiritual house to offer spiritual sacrifices unto God. In other words, you know, Peter says, you church, you are the lively stones put together, built together. That's what the word of God says. And the Lord says, you know, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion and for the time to favor her has come. And the set time is come. And I believe God's set time is come that God is going to release His ministry from His living room. A ministry without any prejudice. A ministry with His anointing. A ministry which will flow forth with the life of the Lord within. Praise God. This is what the Lord wants to perform. This is what the Lord wants to do in our midst in these days, beloved. So let us keep our hearts open. Yeah, what does that mean when the scripture says, My servant shall take pleasure in her stones. What does that mean? This ministry is a ministry that will take care of the stones. Who are the stones? We are the stones. We are lively stones put together. And my servants shall, shall take pleasure in the stones means what? This ministry that God shall release in these days for the time to show mercy towards her has come is a ministry that will show mercy and love and will show everything that God will release from his throne towards one another. Towards one another. For do you know one thing? That the one who ministers is also a stone. Praise God. So he needs mercy. Don't you feel that? That yeah, I need mercy as much as you need mercy. The time for the servants to show mercy to her is come. They shall take pleasure in her stores. Today we have ministries all around. And we see those ministries are ministries which are not even approachable by people. They are above the people. They cannot be reached by the people. They are men who do their own thing by their own will. They do not want others in their lives. We know such ministries. Their decisions are individual decisions. There is nothing called a body there for them. Beloved, the time is coming. God is releasing this ministry. God is raising up a people. For God is returning to Zion. With one intention he is coming to Zion. What is Zion? His church is his Zion. You are his Zion. And the Lord is returning to Zion. And he shall rise up in Zion for what? To show mercy towards her. The Lord wants to show mercy to you. Do you know that? Huh? Do you know that there are people who can't show mercy to themselves? There are people who can't show mercy to themselves. Do you know there are people who can't forgive themselves? For example, they will say, Well, I have forgiven that brother, you know, but... And that person is a person who can't forgive himself. So if we are going to do a ministry, which we see here, we need to be a people who show mercy to ourselves, 
who will have forgiveness ministered to our own selves. In other words, we would allow God's mercy and forgiveness first to work within us in these days. The time has come. And the scripture says that they shall take pleasure in her stones. It talks about a people who shall take care of one another. He talks about a ministry who would need one another. Today we do not see such ministries, beloved. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. Praise God. And do you know that we, we sense that? We, we sense that. And those of us who have been enlightened with the truth of the body life, we know that there is a pleasure in taking care of the stones. But God wants to release this in a higher degree. Do you know there is a pleasure in taking care of the stones? There is a pleasure in ministering to one another. There is a pleasure in opening our lives to be ministered to by others. Praise God. There are not many people... You know, there are not many lives unto whom you can really minister. Because there are many who are not open for ministries of God. They are open for just a hearing a message, but not open for the ministries of God. Not open for God's word to be ministered to and change them. But the scripture says here, one of the things that God is going to do in these days is that he would cause these ministries, these servants of his in these days, to take pleasure in her stones. And we would have to remember that the one who ministers is also one of the stones in the house of the Lord. Praise God. And so it's a ministry of plurality. It's a ministry that, that we do together unto God and together with God in this hour. Praise God. Yes. Verse 15. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord. Why is the Lord is rising up in Zion? Why he wants to take pleasure in the stones? What is the reason? It says here, so the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord. Praise God. And all the kings of the earth, thy glory. Tell me what is the glory here? What is the glory? Yeah, true. That is the that's right. Hmm. Yes. Let's read again. Let's see that there is an illumination that shall come from the Lord. Read again verse fifteen. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Praise God. And all the kings of the earth, thy glory. Okay, let us turn. To, yes? All the kings of the earth shall see thy glory. Thy, thy glory. Yes. Okay. Turn again. I know if I, if I see that, tell the chapter, you know what it is. John chapter 17. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 23 also. Here is the glory. Yes. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. Verse 23. I in them and thou in me, that they might be made perfect in one, and that the world may know. In other words, you want to put in bracket the world, you put that the Gentiles may know, that the kings may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them and as thou hast loved me. Beloved, the glory, the glory is that we be built up into one. Hallelujah. That is the glory. That is the glory. 
that the Lord is saying about and it says here therefore verse 15 so the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord the heathen let me ask you one question how far we have to go to see the heathen next door that's right you know you see many people do not realize that and therefore they want to go to heathen looking for some jungles and tribals we need to realize we don't have to go too far not even take a scooter and go but the heathen is all around us yes no yes, yes. the heathen we can see them all around us. Now the scripture says here, So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord. How shall the heathen fear the name of the Lord? By seeing, By seeing this life which we shall corporately show forth in this hour. Yes. The heathen does not fear the Lord. You know why? Because the true and the living God is not lifted up enough. That's the reason. That's the reason. The true and the living God is not lifted up enough. That's why the heathen does not fear the name of the Lord. He is not protected in the way the scripture says. And it is here we need to cry out. It is here we need to repent. And I think it is here we need to really cry out to God. As I told us in the beginning, you know there is so much being done today in the Christian world. So much of efforts so much of money is being poured out into projects and seminars and many, many things, beloved. And so much of Christian literature is printed and sent out every day and to every place, to every nook and corner of this world. But heathen does not fear the name of the Lord. The heathen is not fearing the name of the Lord. Are we open before God for a change? Are we open before God for a change? Will we be open to offer up everything on God's altar in these days? Even the things which look like the promised child. I think that's where God is calling us. We need to really know that there is no way we can be justified before God's this higher ministry. We really fall very, very low to what He has called us to. And I think we need to realize, we all need to realize and we need to really cry out for uh, for the true ministry to rise up in our hearts, in our lives in these days. And it says here that, And all the kings of the earth, thy glory. And I am sure that the heathen is going to really fear the name of the Lord. As we read in the book of Isaiah, he is not getting weak. He is not getting discouraged but he shall perform his ministry do you think that your lord and my lord is there in the throne room with a ministry to be weak and to be discouraged no no he is there in the throne with a ministry and he is looking for a people who will perform a ministry from his throne in this hour and the time to show mercy.